When it comes to scheduling tasks for Microsoft Identity Manager 2016, a lot of people prefer using the Windows Task Scheduler. It has the virtue of being ubiquitous on every Windows server, and a lot of people are familiar with it. However, for a few different reasons, where possible, I like to use the Microsoft SQL Server Agent. After you open up Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, you can see here's the, you connect to the database engine, here's the database, and then here it shows SQL Server Agent. And right now it says that it's disabled, and you see a little X. We just need to right click and select Start. Now one of the great things about the SQL Server Agent is that we're able to do various different kinds of tasks, and it has built-in notifications. Whereas when you're using Task Scheduler, if you want to create a, a task that had, does a notification, you need to add that as a step in your task. Email so-and-so when this fails. Or you need to have it right to the event log and have some kind of event log monitoring service go grab that and, and send that to you. Which are both valid approaches, but I find this to be easier. So let me set up a job here. We'll call it test mim. And you can also categorize your jobs just as you can in task scheduler. And then here you have a list of steps. So here is one area where it starts to get even better. I can have multiple job steps here and my job steps can be of various types. I can launch a program I can, or a batch file. I can launch a PowerShell script so I can have it right here. Uh, I also have the ability to run the script as different identities, which is very handy. I can also have a T-SQL command where I run a stored procedure in a database or where I am just doing a, a particular query, an insert or an update or a delete. Most commonly I use this to run one or more stored procedures. And in this case, it'll run as the owner of the job as opposed to being able to select a particular identity. Additionally, if I happen to be using SQL Server integration services, I can have that as a particular task step. And I can also specify any configuration options. So if I had a good example here with different parameters to be used in this package, we could see that, that I can specify them here at scheduling time instead of needing to specify those at, run, at uh, design time. Okay. So those are the different task types that I can have. Run a command, program or batch file, PowerShell, Transact SQL, SSIS package. There are various others that are more appropriate for other kinds of things. If you were doing something with SQL Server Analysis Services, you can run queries or commands there, prepare queues. That's not usually something we do in identity management, so we'll ignore that. We'll just set up a very simple T-SQL command, and we can parse it to make certain that we didn't make a mistake there. We'll call it test1. When we go to the Advanced tab, we have several choices. When this step succeeds, what do we want to do? Normally, we go on to the next step. But sometimes, you may want to have it quit the job and report success, skipping over any other steps. Other times, you may want to have it quit the job reporting failure. Once we have more steps in place, you see that we'll be able to jump to those. So let me get a couple of set up. We can also specify retry attempts. Hey, retry this one time. Uh, give an interval, wait this long. There's some steps that that's not appropriate. It fails. We want a human to look at things and fix it. On failure, we can say quit the job or go to the next step or quit it reporting success. Uh, or as we add more jobs, we can jump to a particular one. We can have it write to a file. We can log to a table. We can append it. We can insert, we can make certain that the output goes into the history. And so on. So, as I add that step, and let me add another one, and let's do something a little different. 
select 2 plus 2. As I go to the advanced now, you can see that I can jump particularly to step 1. So if this fails, maybe the next step is to go back to step 1. Of course, that would put us in an endless loop. Unless step 1 then fails and, and jumps out. And this one could be, you know, if this is going to be the last step in the job, quit the job reporting success. But more than likely, I'd want to quit the job reporting failure in the case that this fails. Now I could have, let's create a third step here, and let's call it recover from failure. And again, we'll just make it something very simple. Eh, these examples don't really make a lot of sense, but that's okay. Because we're not showing you T-SQL per se, we're showing you how the SQL agent works. And here, on success, I want it to say quit the job reporting failure. And on failure, I want it to quit the job reporting failure. And then we'll go back to step number two and we'll change it so that on failure it goes to step three. And we'll change step one so that on failure it goes to step three. So now we can see, let me adjust these columns here, That step one and two, if they fail, they're going to jump to step three, where it's going to do some kind of recovery or analysis or stop other things from happening. But if, it, if step one succeeds, it goes to the next step. If step two succeeds, it's going to quit the job reporting success. And step three, if we get to step three and it succeeds, we still want it to quit the job reporting failure because step one and two failed. So that's about steps and, and the cool things we can do there. Next, let's talk about schedules. We can have multiple schedules and we can reuse existing schedules. I am going to create a schedule and we'll call it nightly. And you can see we have different schedule types. The most common one you'll use is recurring, but we can also have a one time schedule. We can have a schedule whenever the CPU becomes idle or start automatically whenever the SQL Server agent starts. So we'll stick with recurring and oh, we can also enable and disable various schedules. We can have daily, weekly, or monthly. So on the daily, we can say it recurs every day or every two days or three days or any number of things like that. And on the day that it's going to occur, we can tell it when it's going to start, run once at this time, or occur every two hours between 9 a.m. and 11.59 p.m. And it starts running on next week on the 23rd. And it's going to end, we're going to do this for a week. Or we could say no end date. And then notifications, we can have it send an email. We can have it send a page. So we can have the email get sent when the job succeeds, when it fails, or when it completes. There are some times when I want to know when a job completes. For MIM, I'm usually setting it to send an email when the job fails. Paging is a little different. We'll get to that. Essentially, it also sends an email, but it allows us a little bit of flexibility. So you might want to send an email when the job completes, but send a page when the job fails. You can also have it write to the event log on failure or success or completion. And interestingly enough, you can cover your tracks. You can have it automatically delete the job when you're done. If you're dealing with multiple SQL servers, you can actually set it up to run against multiple servers. Okay. Let's get into the notifications a little bit more by talking about operators. And here we'll help distinguish between email and paging. So I'm going to uncheck these because we don't really have anyone to notify at the moment. So we haven't set up any operators. So now I have my job. And I, I click on the job activity monitor. 
and we can see my job we can see it's enabled it's not running right now last runtime unknown why does it say unknown as opposed to never well it says that because it doesn't know for certain or last run outcome it doesn't know last run it never ran uh, next run this is a very handy feature we can see what's going to run next well this one's going to run next week at 9 a.m and we can see yep it's scheduled and yeah it's runnable Additionally, once we've run the job a few times, we'll be able to see some run history. When you go to start the job manually, it will give you the option of which step you want to start on. That's great for when you're trying to recover. Uh, if it failed on step one and you've solved the problem and you don't need to rerun step one, then you can say, hey, I'm going to start the job at step two. Okay, now let's talk about operators. So we can define an operator and we provide an email and a pager email. So this could be david at snappyslackers.com. Don't actually send that email, I won't get it. I do have that domain name, but I, I don't check that email. And the pager could be a different email. The pager could be a common thing that's getting passed around or a group and people are getting put in and out of the group, the distribution group, so that on a particular schedule, people are getting those pages or not. And you can specify a duty schedule for the pager when it's on duty, when it's not on duty. Is it on duty on Saturdays and Sundays? Now, most firms I've seen, they do a combination of things. They have a pager. Now, the reason why we have a pager on duty schedule is because we can have a fail-safe pager that it's going to go to if the normal pager is off duty. But what most companies do is they will tend to uh, have things going from... Uh, 12 midnight to 11.59.59 and they'll do that the whole time. So if we say 12, then we've got to change it to AM, 12 AM. And then they simply pass the pager around. So now I have set up the pager and typically this would be another distribution group rather than an individual again that's the way most companies do it so IDM DG at snappy slackers so here we're going to get the emails so that everyone in the distribution list can see it but the person who's got the pager uh, and is going to get woken up or that it's being routed to them to their to their particular pager uh, that's going to happen that way and then we can click OK. We can go back to our job. And now we can indicate, hey, notifications on email. Let's email uh, when, the, when the IDMDG, when the group, or when the job completes. So everyone knows. But let's page IDMDG when the job fails. So very quickly, we can set up a job and we can schedule it we can have and and the schedule here is much more flexible than in task scheduler we've got notifications built in another piece of the puzzle that i really really like is so when i'm scheduling tasks i will often need to do a sql step before i do a powershell step where i'm calling a script that's going to do something with mim so oftentimes it'll be something like um, like this, run MA HR import. And before I do that, I may want to have some kind of T-SQL step that is taking place beforehand. I, I would want to run a stored procedure 
execute import deltas. Okay, so we're going to import our deltas and then we're going to, you know, from a file or something into the staging database and then we're going to run the PowerShell script that's going to import that into the management agent in MIM. This can be very handy because if I don't do it that way, then I need to have it in a script where I'm calling SQL and then I'm doing that. The other way to handle that would be to create an ECMA2. And that can often be a whole lot more work than is needed. Uh, these days you can also use the generic SQL MA that has been provided by Microsoft, which does have the ability to call stored procedures before and after. Uh, but if you haven't set that up or, or you're finding it too troublesome to use, this can also be a simpler approach. You run your SQL step here, then you run the management agent here. The advantage of using the generic management agent, the generic SQL management agent for Microsoft is that when anyone runs it, it's going to run the requisite transact SQL step in advance, which is nice. So I do love that I'm able to get the flexibility on the schedules. I love that I'm able to have a lot of flexibility with my steps here, the automatic or the notifications that are built in. And one other word on schedules, let's say like here, this job's going to run every two hours. What if the job takes three hours to run just one particular time? We had a lot of deltas. It takes three hours to run. What's going to happen? Well, with SQL Server Agent, it sees that the job is still executing, so it won't run. So if the 9 o'clock run takes three hours, the 11 a.m. run will get skipped, and it won't run again until 1 p.m. Because that would be the next two-hour slot, 9, 11, 1 and so it won't run until 1 p.m. And that saves headaches and hassles in, that can be caused when the job starts conflicting with itself. Since that was clearly one of the more superior technical how-to videos you've ever seen in your life, I highly recommend you check out our latest video, our playlist, and subscribe.